Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. About a week ago I did a product review of Digitrex brand new utility throttle, the UT6. One of the viewers posted in the comments they wanted to see how to set up a consist with this throttle. So today's video I'm going to demonstrate how to do a simple consist with UT6 throttle. And then I'm also gonna demonstrate how to set up uh, a more advanced consist using uh, two Tsunami 2 enabled locom locomotives and show the difference between doing a simple consist with your throttle or setting up an advanced consist using the CV values of your decoder. So before I start setting this up, I just wanna set the stage here a little bit. If you're going to do consisting, you wanna make sure that the locomotives are at least able to run at about the same speed at the same speed steps. If you have mismatched locomotives, your consisting will never work. If you can see in the background here, I have two brand new Athern Genesis SD70s, Illinois Central 1002, and then Canadian National Paint with IC Markings SD70 1016. So both of these were released in 2020. They both have Tsunami 2 decoders, and they are both uh, essentially match speed wise. If you have two different decoders or two different types of locomotives, for instance, you wanted to consist a GP38-2 and a GP9, you wanna make sure that they're speed matched. And that's a little bit beyond what I'm gonna talk about in today's video. Uh, you can search YouTube channels on, on how to speed, speed match locomotives. But for today's video, I'm not gonna do that. We're just gonna talk about two locomotives that are pretty similarly matched to begin with. Okay, I got track power on. I want uh, locomotive uh, 1002 to be the top locomotive or the lead locomotive. So I'm going to go ahead and program this in. So 1002 and then the lo locomotive. Oops. Got a, few, got a few functions enabled here. Sorry about that. Make sure they're all good. Okay. So 1002 is going to be the top locomotive or the lead locomotive on this. So I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to power this locomotive up and I'm, I'm going to mute it here for a second. So F26 is the startup on this. I did reprogram it so it doesn't come on when track power comes on. Sorry, there's some random sounds enabled that you're hearing. So I'm going to go ahead and mute this. Now one of the things you're going to want to do first to get your consist set up is you're going to run the locomotive in the direction you want it to go. So you can see that I have it in forward. So I'm just going to give it a couple clicks here. Okay. Now the second locomotive we're going to use is uh, 1016. And that is just a little bit off screen here. So I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit. And you can see that that's running in reverse direction. So I'm going to go ahead and make that the active locomotive. So one, zero, one, six locomotive. So now that's the active function. This one is running in reverse. So we're going to go ahead and click to the reverse button. Let's fire this one up. So F 26. Okay, I'm going to mute this as well. Okay, and I'm just going to run this in reverse. Okay, so 1002 and 1016, you have to run them both first in the direction that they need to go. So now we're going to go back to our lead locomotive. So that is going to be locomotive one zero zero two put it back in the forward direction so with this being the head locomotive or the lead locomotive it's currently active we're going to press the, press the locomotive key once and now it's blinking we're going to hit the menu button and now we're going to hit this uh, soft key nine which is the mu plus and we're going to add locomotive 1016 to it you can see that's still flashing, so we're going to go with 1016, and we're going to add the locomotive by pressing the F or the function key. 
So now you can see the message here we're getting that is consisted. So we're going to hit the locomotive key again. So now we have two consisted locomotives, 1002 and 1016. Now if we go ahead and apply throttle here, look at that, both locomotives are responding. Now ordinarily, you would want to connect the couplers, but I just wanted to demonstrate that both of these are functioning independently of one another. So let's go ahead and reverse the consist here. Now, a couple things that I'll mention. I'm gonna unmute F8 here for just a second. When I do that, only the head locomotive or the lead locomotive responds to it. And that's the disadvantage of a simple consist. There's only certain functions that will work using a simple consist. So for example, on both of these locomotives, I have them set up with uh, CV2 and CV, I'm sorry, CV3 and CV4, which is acceleration and deceleration. I have them set fairly high so I can get a realistic response with the brakes, which is mapped to function 11. All of those really become disabled. If I hit F11 in a simple consist, it'll apply the brakes to the lead locomotive, but not any of the trailing units. And that's a, that's the big disadvantage of doing a simple consist. Um, the most of the functions only had um, respond to the lead locomotives, so like the bell, the horn, some of the things that you would only want the lead locomotive to have. But you know, braking and some of the other um, lighting functions, the trailing locomotives are not going to respond to. So that's how the simple consists work. Again, we'll just run this here a little bit. So. Pretty simple to set up a simple consist using the UT6 throttle. So when you're all done, you want to release, a, release the locomotives from the consist. So we're going to go ahead and hit the locomotive button again. And we want to release. So we're going to hit the menu button. And what we need to do is we're going to, uh, we need to release the trailing unit. So 1016. Whoops, okay, sorry about that. It went into the recall, so let's go. So 1016, it's a quick recall, so it's mapped to function two. So now, sorry, I'm gonna exit out of this. We're gonna try this one more time. Menu, we need locomotive 1016, which is two. We want to release this from the consist. You can see you have MU minus, that's corresponding to the soft function eight. That has now been released. This is now independent of one, uh, the head locomotive 1002. So I'm just gonna go ahead and demonstrate that. So only 1016 is working independently of 1002. Go ahead and re-enter 1002 and show that that's now working independent of one another. So that's how you set up a simple consist using the UT6 throttle. Okay, so I just showed you how to do a simple consist using your hand throttle. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about a more advanced consist. So to do this, we're actually gonna change the CV values of the locomotives. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to program a consist address. And there's two ways of doing this, and I'm gonna show you both ways. You can either do it simply by changing the CV values using your command station, or you can use JMRI. So CV19 actually is the consist address, and you're gonna make this address a unique value that is not programmed to any of your other locomotives, and it's going to be anywhere between 1 and 127. So it's technically by default going to be a short address. Anything 128 and above will not work. So you can pick whatever you want to, and then for the example I'm going to use for these two locomotives that I just uh, showed you with the UT6, I'm going to make both of them a uh, consist address of 100. So to do this, you'll just go to your hand throttle um, or your command station and program CV19 to a value of 100. 
Then to get it back to your normal four digit address, you just program CV19 back to zero. The interesting thing about this is if you want to run the locomotives in reverse or inverted um, fashion, so the lead locomotive is heading forward and then the other, the trailing locomotive is heading in reverse, for the reverse locomotive, you're going to add a value of 128 to whatever your CV consist is. So if you're adding, if you're going to make the CV consist be a value of 100 for the trailing locomotive, which we're going to run in reverse uh, orientation, we're going to add 128 to that. So we're going to have that be a CV value of 228 instead of 100. This is where advanced consisting really comes in nice. For each locomotive, you can go ahead and program in for the various functions that you want. So for the head locomotive, we know that F1 is the bell, F2 is the horn, F3 is the short horn, F4 is dynamic brakes, F5 are the ditch lights, F6 is unassigned for this unit, F7 is the light dimmer, and F8 is mute you can set these for how you want them. So for the lead unit, I'm going to have the horn, I'm sorry, the bell, horn, short horn, dynamic brakes, ditch lights, we're gonna skip F6. Um, we'll make F7 enabled, even though we don't really use the dimmer that much. And then I want F8 enabled. And I'll show you the, the math on this here in just a second. And then CV22 is going to be your front and rear headlights, F9, F10, F11, and F12. There are ways you can program more than uh, F12. If you need to, you can consult your um, uh, Tsunami manual to get into the higher CV values. You can also set your coast and acceleration. So CV23 is your acceleration rate. CV24 is your coast rate. So here's the math on, on how we would program these particular CVs. So for example, I have CV21 here, and this corresponds to function one through eight. And function one is set at bit zero, function eight is set at bit seven. And we know from programming, we start at F0, or I'm sorry, at bit zero, that has a value of one, bit 1 has a value of 2 and you just double it 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 until you get to bit 7 which is 128. So just for this example and you can do it however you want to, if I wanted function 1, 2, 3, 5, and 8 enabled on this locomotive, I'm going to add up the values for each of these bits. So this is bit one, um, 0, 1, 2, 4, and seven. So I'm going to add 128 plus 16 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, and that's a CV value of 151. So I'd go ahead and program 151 into CV21. The nice thing is you can program CV21, 22, 23, and 24, and you'd never have to change them because when you set CV19 to zero, these become disabled. When you set your CV uh, in 19 to whatever address you want, these become enabled. So this is just a really slick way of getting your consist set up. And all you have to do is change one CV value if you want to do an advanced consist on your locomotives. So let's go ahead and demonstrate on how we're going to do this with JMRI. Okay, so I have JMRI set up here and I have its, uh, the head unit, the lead unit on the programming track. Uh, 1002. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this consist tab and you can see right now the advanced consist able uh, address is set to zero. But there's a couple things I want to to show you here. In JMRI here is where you can actually set this to the functions to respond to the consist address or the locomotive address only. Meaning when I set my advanced consist address anything that is tabbed to say respond to consist address will actually work for this particular locomotive. So function one, yes. Well, let's actually start at the top. Consist address for front, light, and forward, yes. Front, light, and reverse, yes. 
F1, yes. F2, yes. F3, yes. F4, yes. F5, yes. F6 is unassigned, so this is locomotive address only. F7, I don't have the dimmer set for this uh, unit. F8, yes. F9, yes. F10, yes. F11, which is braking, yes. And you can just go through and see the list here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this to an address of 100, which is going to be CV19. I'm going to write this change on the sheet. And this unit is now set for a advanced consist address of 100. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the trailing unit, which is 1016, and I'll show you what I have set for that locomotive. Okay, so I have 1016 on the track here. Go ahead and hit, click on the consist tab. So since this is the trailing locomotive, there's a couple things we're going to notice different here. First of all, you can see most of these tabs are actually locomotive address only, meaning these functions are not going to respond when in consist. So for example, F1, the bell, in a, in a prototypical locomotive consist, when the engineer activates the bell, it's only going to be in the lead unit. So same with the horn. These are set up to be the local address. So when 1016 is enabled, these will respond. When it's the advanced consist address, they're not going to respond. And you're going to get a more prototypical operations with that. So the things that I have set up, F4, which are the dynamic brakes. When F4 isn't activated on your throttle, it's going to activate it for every locomotive in the consist. Same with F8, which is mute. F9, which is the coupler. F10 is straight to 8. F11 is the... Um, train brake, independent brake, which is important because I want to be make sure that these are addressed. F26 and F27 are consist address, so that's going to give us the ability to turn the prime mover on and off. If you only wanted the prime mover to be activated on the lead unit, we would set both of these to locomotive address only. So I'm going to go ahead and set the advanced consist address to 100, but here's the key. Locomotive direction right below your advanced consist tab. Do you want it to be normal or reversed? And in this case, I want it to be reversed because I'm going to run it in opposite direction of the lead unit. So make sure that that is tabbed. If you're doing this via CV, CV19, you would add a value of 128 to whatever address you're using. So we would program 228 into the CV19. So I'm going to go ahead and write changes on sheet. And now we are good to go. And actually, just to sort of verify this, I'm going to click on the CV tab. And when we come down here to CV19, it is currently set at 228. So let's go ahead and get this back on the layout and show you how it works. Okay. So we got track power on. I got my two locomotives here. So I'm going to enter my advanced consist address, which is 100. Hit enter. So now, this both locomotives should respond. I'm going to do a power-up sequence here, and it's going to get real loud, but then I'll mute them. So let's go ahead and hit function 26 to fire these up. I know you won't be able to tell on the video, but both locomotives are firing. Okay, I muted both of them. Just going to demonstrate here, both of these will respond, start giving us some throttle. Reverse. And I'm going to turn the noise back on, so I'm going to demonstrate how the brakes will actually respond here in just a second. So I'm going to unmute.
So I just demonstrated breaking works for both the bell and horn are only on the lead unit. So I really like using the advanced consist. It takes a little bit of work on the front end to get set up, but once you have it set up, all you have to do is just change CV value of 19 to whatever um, address between 1 and 127 that you want. For the trailing unit, add 128 if you want it in reversed, and you're good to go. So if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Have a great day.